Hi, I'm Denise Drummond, Legislative Policy Analyst for the Commission on Women, Children, Seniors and Equity Opportunity. We are here today at day two of the Clemency Quilt Tour. Day one began at East Granby at the Newgate Prison, and here we are for day two at the Connecticut State Capitol. Day three tomorrow will continue on to Niantic at the York Correctional Facility and then on to Whammy State Street in Bridgeport. But today, I want you to enjoy the day. We have a lot planned. We have activities. We have information booths set up. Uh, we, you're going to hear from some awesome speakers today as well. And to begin, to kick off day two of Clemency Tour, I'd like to introduce our Executive Director, Mr. Stephen Hernandez. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, thank you all for being here today. My name is Steve Hernandez, and I'm the executive director of the commission that focuses on equity and opportunity. And I have to tell you, the commission is here today because we believe in second chances, but most importantly, we believe in first chances because so many of our residents have not had that. So many of our incarcerated residents were there for a reason that started way before them that wasn't even about them. So what this is about is about understanding that the path of redemption is one that we are all a part of and that we must all participate in and support so that we can all be part of a better Connecticut. So I'm proud to stand here in front of you. I'm really humbled to stand in front of this quilt which represents the dreams and aspirations of people. And I'm really happy to be here with you today. And Clemens, the Connecticut Clemency Quilt Tour was organized by Women's Against Mass Incarceration, the National Council of Formerly Incarcerated uh, Women, as well as uh, Once Incarcerated. And these are all organizations that have been uh, founded and run by people with lived experience, people who have all been uh, formerly incarcerated, um, specifically women uh, who have been, uh, who were once incarcerated, now back in their communities and working incredibly hard, who have dedicated their lives to uh, helping other people, again, specifically people who are locked up right now and what the Connecticut Clemency Quilt Tour is doing is for these four women uh, that are behind me um, they are working to ask the governor to commute the sentences of these women who have served in some cases uh, decades of, of prison time um, and who now uh, need to come home people who have turned their lives around who are who are done incredible things while they're incarcerated whether it's going back to school um, being incredible mentors to other people who are incarcerated and now it's time for them to come home and be able to resume their lives. They do not need to be incarcerated any further and that's what the clemency, uh, the Connecticut Clemency Tour has been doing. Hello, my name is Tahiba Bain. I am a, a commissioner of the African American South Commission for the Women, Children, um, Seniors, Equity and Opportunity Commission and today we're having a uh, an, an event here um, to edify and bring awareness of the clemency that needs to happen in Connecticut. And I know people probably don't know what clemency is, but clemency is commutation of sentencing. We're asking for the infirm, the elderly, the um, survived and punished, and the long-termers. And we're asking that the governor, Ned Lamont, and the Board of Pardon and Paroles utilize their clemency power to free some women. If you can look behind me, there's some, there's some four women on the board that we're actually um, highlighting for the clemency, for the first round of clemency in Connecticut. I've done ostensibly a lot. I've had written, written in a lot of books. I was written in an um, international museum book to talk about prison arts. I did a play inside prison. I talked about how the arts was very important. Judy Doran is now in the prisons. Um, Wally Lamb writing um, thing was in the prisons, all because of a lot of the things that I did in the beginning. A lot of stuff I never got paid for, because it wasn't about the cash, it was about the masses the masses that didn't have a voice, and I became that voice. I was the chair of Criminal Justice Committee in New Britain at the NAACP and created the NAACP version of the Ban the Box, which is now has turned into a million jobs for formerly incarcerated people and people with felony convictions. I created the Speak Up, Speak Out booklet that got translated in the 2010 International Drug Law Conference in Budapest. So all that rallying y'all see international, that's off of that book. <laughs> I've done a lot for this, this state, and it has been an honor. Good. I love the people in this building. It has changed my life and the life of my friends who are here today because of 
I kept my public image intact and never let nothing let me go back. And that is my message today. They have kept their image intact. They want to come home and we would know best about the struggle and what it takes to be successful on the outside. And we're going to offer them jobs so that they can become ambassador once incarcerated and run our once, and run our once incarcerated anonymous meetings so that we give peer support to formerly incarcerated people. I'm transitioning into a re-entry life coach and passing the baton to Tahiba and my co-founder Tracy Bernardi because I have PTSD and psychosomatic seizures. I'm still effective. I still advocated and changed bills like the epilepsy use um, for marijuana use for epilepsy. And I have epilepsy now. I never knew I was going to need it, but I'm glad I advocated for it. I'm sorry. I didn't know this was going to happen. It's hard to say goodbye. Compassionate reentry means people reentering our communities have their basic needs met in a timely, efficient, and effective manner. And they're linked to services such as behavioral health, job readiness, family reunification, and peer mentoring programs, in addition to other vital services. This will ensure their successful transition. It means that people are treated with respect and dignity and they're encouraged and reminded that their past does not have to define their future. She likes it when I repeat things. I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> Compassionate reentry means that people coming home from prison are treated with dignity and respect. They are encouraged and reminded that their past does not have to define their future. Woohoo! That's, that's a Yahoo right there. Yahoo! Woohoo! <laughs> In order to deliver compassionate reentry services, I believe we must implement a comprehensive strategy that includes establishing hubs for reentry in Connecticut's urban cores. This will enable the state of Connecticut, community providers like CPA, faith and business leaders, and philanthropy to join forces to ensure that the immediate needs of people returning home from incarceration are met in a, systemic, a systematic, well-coordinated, and timely fashion. The less trauma people experience upon release and the safer and healthier their living environment, the less likely they are, re are to return to drugs, have a mental health crisis, or participate in the underground economy and the fewer the people who will cycle in and out of prison and jail. I just want to read you a poem and then I will close. So this is a poem that I wrote when I was 18 years into my incarceration. And the reason I'm reading this poem and why my feelings are so important is because I guarantee the women on these, pick these quilts, the women, the people, the men also inside, that you know we're doing a women's clemency, but everybody, must feel this way at some point when it has a long term. A life beyond these walls where I could never go. A world I no longer know. 18 excruciating years I served and lost. Seven more until I paid their cost. I didn't know about collateral damage. I watched the trees and houses quietly pass me by. I'll make it there before I die. At least I'll try. They rip the truth from the confines of your soul in the hunt for facts and control. There is a punishment. There is a punishment cruder than paying a debt. Fate beyond time. It is true regret. Quietly lurking, accusingly, it's so clear. I close my eyes and see it there. Highways like penalties seem long and unbending. Help me, this road needs ending. I can't escape my skin. There is no place I can run. I cannot undo what has been done. Like a small flower caught beneath a heavy stone. I am crushed by my sins. I cannot atone. 
burden plagued with remorse as I begin to pray, Father God, don't, don't really do this now because I don't feel like this God, but Father God, take me this day. Like a forgotten soul, I sit here chained and cuffed. But when I ask, will I, will they have paid enough? Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Isaiah Terry, and I'm a member of the Catal Center for Equity, Health, and Justice. I would like to thank Women Against Mass Incarceration for inviting us and allowing us to share this space and time with you. And thank each and every one of you for being here and deciding to be here. We all know that when it comes down to work and doing the work, it's easy to find people who want to be seen. But when, as mentioned yesterday, boots on the ground, hands in the dirt comes into play, there's only but a faithful few. Being at Newgate gave light to an old situation that is rather new to people whom have been kept in darkness from this truth, a truth that has plagued our community in worse ways than COVID-19, AIDS, HIV, even cancer. The plague of mass incarceration, formerly known as slavery, has torn apart nations and has torn apart families. As time has gone on, we are still suffering with the issue of realigning ourselves and understanding why we have one parent in a household, or sometimes none, by the hands of this system. At Catal, we believe that mass incarceration is not the answer. We work together in community to free them now. We know that the system is unkind to a particular group of folks and believe respecting and protecting our women is essential to our growth and ability to not go extinct as a people. These women are the antibodies fighting off this disease. They are the voice of God that tells the plague to go back and sit still. Tells the troublesome darkness, not my people, over here. Tupac mentioned, we all come from a woman got our name from a woman and our game from a woman. Now watch this. He said, I wonder why we rape our women. Do we hate our women? I think it's time to kill for our women. Time to heal our women, be real to our women. And if we don't, we'll have a race of babies who will hate the ladies. So please join us at Catal as we continue to work together on getting men and women free from prisons and jails due to COVID-19, as well as cutting the number of men and women in prisons and jails, shutting down jails and prisons in the state, and reinvesting that money saved back into communities most harmed. Thank you. Woo!